Polyethylene is an extremely versatile, lightweight, and cheap material. These, among others, are a few of the countless reasons why it has become one of today's most widely used and dynamic plastics. A common variety is low-density polyethylene, which is often used to hold and carry purchased items from a retailer. While low-density polyethylene may be recycled into new products, it is not biodegradable. A plastic bag will be used for an average of 12 minutes, but can take up to 1,000 years to decompose. Most polyethylene products are disposed of in public landfills or are incinerated. These types of disposal methods tend to lead to environmental pollution problems. The total consumption of low-density polyethylene is primarily focused in Northeast Asia, which was responsible for 31% of the total in 2014. China topped the list at 23% of the world's total usage. Most people hear about this wide production in use and immediately link that to the problem. However, there is an inaccuracy in making that assumption. In reality, in terms of production, polyethylene plastic bags are the most eco-friendly. They require the least amount of energy, fossil fuels, and water to produce, as well as their production results in the least amount of waste as a byproduct. So why are polyethylene's bag an issue then? They begin to cause trouble after their single use. They generally wind up sitting in landfills or escaping into marine environments for the majority of their life. Many polyethylene bags find a way out of landfills and into the ocean because they are either not properly disposed of or, as a result of their lightweight nature, are easily blown off of the top of landfills. Partially because of this, 85% of all sea turtles will be injured or killed by plastics, some studies say. Turtles, in addition to all other affected marine life, are facing a growing risk from the plastic consumption in modern humans. Therefore, the issue being discussed is not the problem with the way that polyethylene bags are created, but the pollution they cause after their disposal and why this is as such. Soon we'll explain how plastic bags are manufactured. However, it's best to first give some background on what a polymer actually is. A polymer is a molecule that is a long chain of atoms, often predominantly hydrocarbons. This is the structure of ethylene. It is a basic monomer with a backbone of carbon bonded with hydrogens. The carbon atoms of monomers can link together to form long chains known as polymers. There are three forms in which this long chain structure can be arranged, each of which will produce unique properties. These forms are linear, branched, and cross-linked. When a polymer forms linearly, all of the carbon atoms are linked together in one long continuous chain with few to no splits or forks. This allows the polymer to be tightly packed and forms high-density polyethylene. Branching is where the chain splits into two paths caused by a single carbon atom connecting to more than two others. When attempting to work with branched polyethylene, the many branches prevent it from packing as closely as linear polyethylene. This is known as low-density polyethylene, which is what most standard bags are composed of. Having a lesser density allows low-density polyethylene to be both lightweight and flexible, while its long chains still allow it to make remarkable tensile strength. Cross-linking is simply when the end of a branch reconnects with the main chain, creating a loop. The long polymer chains give plastic bags a remarkable tensile strength. As an example, this rope is comprised entirely of plastic grocery bags braided together. As seen here, the rope exhibits significant tensile strength. Divided into the individual strands, each bag supports upwards of 11 kilograms of weight, or 25 pounds. The polymer chains are also waterproof and retain their properties for exceedingly long periods of time without degrading. The production of a bag begins when petroleum products are broken down into simpler hydrocarbon structures. One of the many that can be created is the monomer ethylene. This C2H4 molecule, while in a gaseous state, is introduced to a catalyst, often a type of peroxide, which accelerates its transition into a polymer chain. Other monomers are sometimes added into the mix as well, creating copolymers with specifically unique properties. This newly created polyethylene is a thermoplastic, meaning that it has weak secondary bonds, and thus can be reshaped via heating many times without losing its properties. At this stage, it is often shaped into pea-sized resin pellets for storage or transport to specialized facilities. 
When it's timed, the polyethylene pellets are blended with additives to change specific qualities such as color or UV resistance. They're then fed into an extruder heated to 380 degrees Fahrenheit. The pliant plastic is then extruded into a small bubble to which air is added. This bubble of plastic is expanded both upward and outward until it reaches a height usually exceeding 20 feet. Whether the bubble is drawn upwards more or allowed greater expansion determines if the polymer chains are aligned to better handle strain in vertical or lateral directions. The plastic cools as it is stretched, causing it to crystallize slightly, but not fully, as the irregular branches prevent full crystallization. This process is known as blown film extrusion. The plastic bubble is then rolled into flat sheets and taken to specialized machines where it has bag edges heat sealed on and tear away edges perforated in place. Now, what does all of this mean in terms of recyclability? According to the United States Municipal Solid Waste Survey of LDPE use, conducted in 2012, only 17.1% of the over the 2 million tons of these plastic bags used are recovered and recycled. This indicates the issue is not in the physical recycling of LDPE, but it is in the accessibility of the recycling. Many curbside recycling services do not accommodate number four plastics. This actual process of recycling LDPE requires extensive cleaning of the material, multiple phases of melting it, and a return to the pellet form it had during pre-production. This recycling is not consistently offered because it is expensive and time intensive. However, when used, it is effective and a much better option compared to landfill disposal. Therefore, increasing the accessibility to recycling plastic bags has the potential to greatly decrease the environmental risk they pose. Due to the negative long-term effects on the environment, banning plastic bags is becoming a common phenomenon within the United States and abroad. In the United States, it began in San Francisco in 2007 when they placed the first local ban on plastic bags. These movements have reduced consumption of polyethylene bags, but they do not offer any alternatives. Regarding alternatives, there is currently a rise in the popularity of biodegradable and reusable bags. Fabric grocery bags are often offered at the beginning of a cashier lane, offering customers the option to purchase a sturdy bag, which can be used multiple times rather than constantly acquiring plastic bags to dispose of once their purpose has been served. The reason to be wary of post-consumption of plastic bags is because they do not degrade like typical organic matter does. Polyethylene does not decompose in reaction to water. Instead, it undergoes photodegradation. This is where reaction to UV light makes the bonds within the polymer chain weak and brittle so that they eventually disintegrate. However, this process takes such a long time that it has never conclusively been measured. In addition, if biodegradable plastic bags are sent to a landfill, they also will degrade at a minimal to non-existent speed. This means that the key to having eco-friendly bags is to ensure that society properly disposes of single-use bags. Polyethylene ones must be recycled and biodegradable ones must be composted. Both should avoid landfills and oceans at all costs. Despite the positive benefits gained from biodegradable plastic and paper bags, a full conversion from polyethylene is far from ideal. While biodegradable plastic and paper bags are much more environmentally friendly after they are disposed of, polyethylene plastic bags use magnitudes less energy and produce far less pollution and byproducts during manufacturing. This is the trade-off that must be acknowledged. Plastic bags are worse to dispose of, but Degradable bags are worse to produce. To conclude, the properties such as high tensile strength and flexibility given to low-density polyethylene by its branch structure are what make plastic bags so effective for transporting goods. However, these properties also make polyethylene extremely durable and difficult to dispose of, which has repercussions of environmental harm. Therefore, the challenge of this material is to find a way to manufacture plastic bags or a completely different alternative in the same resource efficient way, but that can be more easily recycled or have a shorter post-consumption lifespan.